Yep. Dark Binding after Dark Binding has worked so well for him. Maybe that's even something they need to look towards. Jay Ree on Alistair. It is not working. No, it really isn't. And we are seeing the same bands thus far. SK have banned all three of the same champions they have in the two previous games. Ooh. Irelia, TF, and Zillion. And this let is now a change for Millennium. Yeah, they've let Maokai through and Nidalee through. So they've given Kevin the choice and they're going to attempt to take the other one. I think he's actually going to go Maokai. I wonder if this... Yeah, I think Maokai would be the preference. And I wonder if Millennium were hoping that it's going to be Nidalee and they could pick Maokai. I think they're going to first pick Morgana again. And then they're just going to say, fine, we're going to see what you go with. And well, no, no, they're not. They don't want to risk Maokai going I through. actually like your idea mm. because the chances of locking in both Nidalee and Maokai are slim to none. But in the same token, if SK are, are adamant that in terms of the priority Ooh. picks, this is, this is the uh, way to go, I would love to see this. It worked well in Challenger. Chachi did a great job with Swain. How practiced is uh, Kevin with Swain if he's going to lock it in? No, 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 changed it. Goes to the Cogmore Morgana, but it's a big change. It's the support change, and they've also stolen away SK's duo lane. Duo lane completely. Yes, Morgana Cogmore has been running both of the previous games for SK. So Millennium have already already leveled up their pick and ban phase. They've got a relevant AD carry. They've stolen away Enraiter's. Uh, uh, Morgana, who was landing so oh. many Dark Bindings, but like we said, it is late game ADCs. Tristana is the theoretical opposite number to Kogmo. Yeah, and there's so many options available to it. Nami alongside Tristana, it is a strong, potent lane. If you get caught out, you could well be in trouble. So immediately, SK, they're like, fine, you're gonna take away our first choice. We can switch straight to this, and it is a strong second choice. Do you see how uh, decisive SK are in yeah. their picks and bans? Um, they took a little while for their Maokai, but in the previous games as well, SK have been very, very on point, and they've been very quick to react in what they wanted to lock in. And I think we're going to look at Emperor Calpatine once this, again. This is top lane cow this time around. Lee Sin also picked up by Cottonix, despite the changes. Of course, he will fall away on the late game. Doesn't have that attack speed nerf as heavy as he would do when he used to get on towards that AD carry instead. We'll see if it works out. We'll see whether they're going to get to that late game stage and whether Cottonex can really put pressure on it because as so far hasn't had a great impact. Agreed. His Jarvan was non-existent, really. His Evelyn just got shut down by Enraiters Morgana and Dark Bindings on, on so many occasions. So back to a comfort pick, back to something that he's played a boatload. This will be his 14th game in summer. He played 13 in the summer split. He's got eight wins with that champion, so that's a pretty good win-loss ratio. But it's the top cow that's going to be interesting to me. Where and how is Kevin going to play this? Because we've seen Trinity Force into Static Shiv uh, yesterday, and then we've seen a tank build later in the matchup. So what itemization route is Kevin going to take against this Maokai? Well, of course, the Ziggs was picked in there. We saw Svensk going on. Karzix already looks is locked in for the mid lane from Kerb. Is this what they needed? It's a shake-up for sure from Millennium, but is it something untested? I like Lux in this matchup. I think the range advantage that you're going to have, the wave clear you're going to have against Ziggs, and also the ability to lock down both a Karzix or a Maokai that dash into you with that light binding. I mean, it's going to root two people in place. It is very, very powerful. When you combine that with a Dark Binding, when you combine that with a, a, a Pulverize, there is a lot of hard CC that can come into play. But I do think it is very relevant for Kerb and Kevin to have a, a strong start to the game, because if they aren't able to get those Bindings, get that CC, and keep Creatine alive with that Cogmore to Kite and you know, lay down the Smackdown, um, I just think they're going to get trampled over. Lux, of course, her passive does more damage in 4.13. So small changes, small tweaks. She's more relevant in the late game because it now has an ability power ratio. If she wants to risk walking up and landing that pot, that's for sure. It's it, a risky, it, risky Or if someone try. jumps on you, you can get the damage but down. But honestly, for Millennium, this is the time to take risks. <laughs> yep. This is where they have to try something. Who do you guys at home think has the edge heading into this game? Is it the final game? That's the question. Uh, tweet out hashtag SKWIN or hashtag MILWIN to at LOL Esports and we'll check out your votes. Also, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to use 
the LCS at big place if you see something you think is outstanding. There's been a few so far. Yep. Great plays, especially from SK's side. Mine, mine's a slightly non-standard one. I really like the way SK peeled away from a bottom lane fight, dodging all the spells yeah. and ended up getting kills. I mean, it's just such great understanding of the situation. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game three, will it be the final one? Will it be a clean sweep for SK Gaming? Or will Millennium manage to strike back? They are 2-0 down. Rockan, of course, managed to put Super Hot Crew in a similar situation yesterday. Super Hot Crew did manage to drag that game back, but it was a long, hard-fought battle, which they ended up losing 3-1. Of course, they will be facing Fnatic. The winner of this will face Alliance. And it seems Millennium are on one of their famed invades. They've got such a strong level one. I mean, flash for flash on supports. That's an okay trade, and we'll see if any jungler can punish it. But with Dark Binding, with Light Binding, with Pulverize, the level one is definitely sitting in favor of Millennium. Um, I want to go back to something that you said just at the end of Picks and Bands, was you're 2-0 down on a best of five, and you know why not pull out all the stops or, or you know take a risk? I actually think Millennium took risks in game one and two. Lucian was a risk. Corky was a risk. Alistair support was a risk both times. And it didn't work out for Millennium. So this time around, it's their third, third trick, third gambit, as it were. And we'll see if this one can actually work out in their favor. Well, if you've not seen top lane cow at all yesterday, if you weren't a keen-eyed viewer, we'll be starting. We'll see if he goes the same route that we've seen so far, which is the Trinity Force into Static Shiv into possibly a Frozen Heart. Of course, that will be changing because he's up against a double AP comp in. Freddy and Jezazon, Maokai and Ziggs. It's actually quite difficult to itemize because there is a fair amount of damage from obviously Ziggs and Maokai. Then you've got a lot of physical damage from both Kha'Zix and Candy Panda, especially if Sven Skeren goes for that sort of early armor penetration build. But luckily, Kevin's got a press R to survive most things button. And we'll see how effectively he uses it. I actually likened the Trinity Force Static Shiv build and play style to a split push Shivana play style because You've, you've got that trample passive on Alistair, which does give you a slightly more effective wave clear. It's not a massive amount of damage, but it will allow you to push a wave fairly quickly. And when you get those static shiv procs and the attack speed, etc., uh, in conjunction with your pulverize, you can actually clear waves very, very quickly. So we'll see if Kevin does play that split push role and does play that route, because Top lane cow is very exciting. Interesting start between these two mid lanes. Jess has thrown out those bouncing bombs, and not a lot of them are connecting with Kerb so far, who's happily just to focus on the farm, sidestep those bombs. But again, as a Ziggs, very easy to farm out. We'll just keep his CS very tight between them. See how that one progresses. Quick candy panda putting the explosive shot onto Kraton. Get that little burn dot ticking away on him. Kraton, of course, led in the last match in the CS. Finally managed to get himself a little bit of an edge on it, but Candy Panda has been fantastic throughout. Incredible stats across these games. 10-1-7 in game one, 7-2-9, I believe, in the last matchup as well. Explosive shot working well, wiping out the wave, keeping the pressure. Oh, Bubble's not going to connect in rates. Might be in a little bit of trouble. They're going to go for it. Connex comes around the side, lands the Sonic wave, but in rated. The heal comes down, jumps on him from Candy Panda, gets the slow on Connex. Nicely done. And SK are free. So good attempt by Millennium. They get the flash, uh, not the flash, rather the heal from Candy Panda. But a very, very smart rocket jump from Candy Panda, actually slowing Cottonex down, preventing him going further. Um, I was I was going to say before the gank came in, if you actually looked at Candy Panda and Rated, they were poking Creatin and Jerry very effectively. In between Candy's CSing and in Rated's positioning, they were putting a lot of auto attacks and spell casts onto their opponents, which Creatin and Jerry had no response for. But the moment I wanted to say those words, you know, it, uh, Dark Binding did connect, and obviously Cartonex came in for that gank. It's going to be a repeat gank. Yeah, but no flash but available this time. He managed to land the flash Sonic Wave. It's going to be a lot harder to land. He's backed off. He's going to go straight towards the white off the side there. Jerry, meanwhile, he is going to back off and farm wise still pretty even between the two. Look at that. Candy Panda just walks up, explosive shot straight to Jerry. Yeah, and, but while farming and Creatin, I just don't really think he's focusing on it. I don't really think he's putting a lot of uh, attention into that. And, and you know, when you've, when you've struggled two, game, two games in a row, it does affect your psychological play. And 
We just need to see, every time we look there, see how effectively Creatin is, is trading with his opposite number. Anyways, Cottonex is holding Creatin's hand. Dark mind, he can't connect, they're going in. No flash, remember, for them this time around. He will try and get on towards end it. Have they got enough? They have! Cottonex finally gets himself first blood. Punishing and rated for that flash earlier on, where J Ryu was able to throw the dark binding out. Kill secure there for Cotton next. The repeated ganks working out, working in his favor. But it has cost Creatin some CS. He should make that up shortly, though, since uh, Candy Pan is going to get away. Can Svinskir and steal a blue buff? This is the question he's going in. Hello, flash on towards him, pounce. And the unseen threat of a Kazix catches on towards him. Candy Panda, oh, Dark Binding catches. Rocket <laughs> jumps just at the right moment, though. Gets himself to safety. Yeah, managed to queue up that rocket jump before the Dark Binding connected. So anyways, top lane is lane we haven't looked at extensively. Kevin, with his sustain and his harassment, has got a small CS lead, but it won't be much. No, it's going to be a sustain versus a sustain, as Freddy will just clear out a bit of this wave. Well, it's a... Fairly passive lane, let's put it this way. I don't it's going to be exhilarating. To much. It's going to be both ultimate's damage reduction, both knockbacks, and you know CC. It's I'm sure well, it'll uh, be exhilarating. But Kevin, with the Trini with a Sheen first item, does signal it's going to be that Trinity Force. So yeah, very very hoping to see this Emperor Calpatine. And you know Kevin's got such a beef with Freddy because of how badly he's been beaten in those last two two matches. You know, he needs to, he really needs to, to get his horn stuck in and, and, and try to punish Freddy. Any more? I can, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna save them a little bit. You, I'm gonna you, save them a little bit. You've been working on these overnight or what? No, 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 no. Just, just inspired by, by Joe casting the, the, the games yesterday. That's you know? it. Yeah, we'll see, really, yeah. really got me excited. Not at the moment. Freddy, ooh, look at that. Popped his ultimate. Was a little worried that uh, Kevin was ready to go for it. Of course, Keltnex was. Waiting just off the side there. Jez is warding out. Getting some coverage in this mid lane. Continue to farm. All this while it's a good dark binding landing, but look at Creaton. You can see his health. He cannot get involved in that one. Has to back off. And this bottom lane pairing of Jerry and Creaton has been under pressure throughout this series. Yeah, they've really been struggling. And of course, you know, they are against a very frustrating lane to deal with because there is sustain there on Nami. So, support versus support, but Enrated's got way more hit points, and Jerry's out of uh, out of mana, actually. Ignite is available for Enrated. We'll see if he gets caught. Oh, I thought about going for it there. Managed to sidestep both the Dark Binding Flash out of the Light Bind, and he will get away. It is a good point to uh, mention, of course, for Millennium. They have incredible crowd control. So, ev evolution of the Void Spikes once again for Sven Skeren, as we saw in the previous matchup when he played them. This is a deep, deep move, though, for Sunscreen. Caught out. Head before Bryce. Laser come through! Is it going to be enough? Tries to tank it through. Unbelievable! And Cornex, he's taken down at the side there with Jezus. Yeah, managing to survive. The summoner heal from Jezus actually kept Svenskeren alive in that situation. And just turning it around. Millennium thought they'd caught them out. And even though that final spark did connect, it just wasn't enough damage. If that isn't an LCS big player, I don't know what is. Absolutely fantastic stuff. The combo almost worked out. Jez is going to get himself the blue buff, though. Got himself his first kill of the game as he moves towards the Athenes. Kerb doing exactly the same. So, Cottonex has already tried to create pressure. It worked for him in the bottom lane, but he's now two deaths down. And again, it is starting. The trickle has began for SK. We'll see how they, how quickly they can turn the trickle into a pull. Okay. Light binding. Followed by that is so frustrating yeah. to deal with. Now this is the this is the one of the powers of Millennium Squad. You you are going to have like multiple CCs that can all work very well together. Put Voidus and that Lucian Singularity down from Lux on the ground. Slow people down and line them up for that massive uh, chain of roots. But what needs to follow up after is you need to get Creatin hammering away on that target, or Kerb has to have enough ability power to blow them up. And if he simply, if that doesn't happen, if they can't kill someone by the time that root runs out, that's all they really have. Then they're going to be reliant on Cottonex getting rid of the threats with his Dragon Rage, or obviously, alternatively, Kevin keeping them in place with that knockup. So we we'll should, see if their primary initiation works out. We should discount the, the damage that Kevin will have as that AD carry cow, effectively, you know, melee champion that can get involved. They do put out a lot of damages. AD ratios can get incredible. If he gets a Trinity Force and Static Shaman, I think something like 300 plus AD, which is pretty
pretty high. It is very scary, but he needs to get there first. Yes. Uh, farming still behind Freddy, despite having a slightly you know strong start. It was initially Kevin that was bullying around Freddy, but this time around not working out. And, and Connex playing with his life a little bit. Sven Skurin, if uh, he jumped on it, maybe would have had a lot of damage. Rubber ducky bouncing. Kerp towards him, but instead he just turns it around, puts the light binder down, sidesteps, gets another basic attack with that passive down. Does not land the second skill shot. Sven Skeren is waiting off at the side. Hasn't evolved his wings yet, so he can't pounce in quite as high as he'd like. Can't jump across that forested area just yet. Instead, he has to come around a traditional route, which doesn't look like it's going to work. But look at Jezus, look how much he's pressuring. Really trying to force this one. He wants to go back. Gonna buy up a second item, probably going to be some boots maybe, he's got the things already completed, but they will be the boots. Yeah, the wave clear versus wave clear in that mid lane, and just the ridiculous range, um, is going to be very important when it comes to the siege and the counter siege. Now, SK, when they were dealing with the Ziggs in game one, played very passive and very slow, and I think Lux will have similar levels of wave clear, but Creatin has slowly got some control back in this lane. He was being bullied very early on, but since having access to living artillery and having that phage in his inventory, it does look like Creatin and Jerry are playing more aggressively. The last two or three times we've poked our eyes down at this lane, we've seen Candy Pan and Rayton on the retreat out of risk of getting caught out. Tower dive top, they're going on the cow. It's a tricky tower dive, that's for sure. He's got a lot of reduction here. He's trying to do what he can to try and kite it round. Freddy switches the aggro to Sven Skeren and Kevin lives for now. They trade back in, jump back in towards it. Sven Skeren gets it. Very well played. Second time he goes for the flash execute on Car 6. We'll talk about that later in just a minute. Millennium, oh. they're looking for Candy Panda. Mega Inferno bump does not land on anyone. Jerry manages to land the Brock on towards it. Rated live binding lands from long, long range there. And they do get the kill on the support. One for one trade. Top tower goes down. Still yet to get that dragon. Millennium, they have to win this trade and they have to get the dragon down. They've got to be so careful of the bouncing bombs from Jezus. He's running out of mana though, so time will be out. Fred oh. is going to be teleporting, so this is going to turn into an engage. Candy Panda is still untouched as well. This is going to be a big one, D-Man. It's a five on three though, that's for sure. So it's a big advantage, but it's SK that have forced him away. Kevin goes in once again, pulverizes one towards Freddy, passes him in there. Connex strikes, but he gets caught out. Kevin now in trouble. Jess is trying to land the shots on towards him. Candy Panda has to back off there as Millennium engage, but they do not get the dragon. So job done by SK. End up trading kills in that scenario, but yes, as you rightly pointed out, SK were the ones that got the objective in the tower in the top lane after diving Kevin. They managed to force him away and they got themselves the kill. But because Jezus was so low on mana and he'd used his Mega Inferno Bomb on the initial Dragon Engage, SK weren't able to do more. So Freddy teleports in just to give up his life while securing one kill on the approach to Jezus. No more mana though. He's burned through his entire mana pool. It's going to be relatively uh, useless for the next couple of moments, but it's not over. Dragon is still available. Cottonex is coming in at full life, and I think this is the smart call from SK to back away. Yeah, they need to back off from that one. Kurt was low, but still had the laser, so he could have fired from range. Also, we saw the entire Millennium team moving back in towards that one. Kevin's gone back to the top. They're not done yet, SK. They still want to make sure this is secured. It's the bottom lane that they should be looking at. Creaton is going to back off, go towards that Trinity Force. Infinity yet slowly being built out by Candy Panda. Meanwhile, Sven Skeren, a bit of a more regressive build this time around. Yeah, he's got himself that uh, Brutalizer once more. It is it is the armor pen, Kha'Zix, which, which Diamond did in Super Week again. Yep. Um, Sven Skeren slightly deviated from the full damage route in game one, but we'll see what he decides this time. And Cottonex, obviously, Sidestone and Eastern, going to be getting some wards down. He's, he's been in the right place most of the time. And despite giving up a couple of kills, um, has has felt more impactful, has felt like he's contributing to the team play. Uh, Millennium are only 1,500 gold down at about the 15 minute mark, which is one of the smallest disadvantages they've been in. And we'll see if they can even up their global gold. It is one tower, one dragon that can make it closer. Well, they saw, of course, that Millennium had a number of people up towards the top there. SK quickly tried to move for this one. Jay Reed, quick black shield, stops that Aqua Prison landing. Dragon down to half hit points. They're going to have to take back away from this one. Sven Skeren has taken way too much damage to get involved. For a laser, maybe? easily get picked off if one of the dark or light bindings were to land. Instead, they get both get sidestepped. But Millennium 
they are doing a good job at staying at range and making maximum usage of their abilities to poke them out. Spencer Garen caught out. Is the laser not going to come through? Doesn't go for it. Doesn't pull the trigger. No, he doesn't really want to focus on getting that blue buff. And if, if uh, SK continue to extend this engage with no blue buff on Jezzes and obviously blue on Lux, it's going to be a very big advantage to Millennium. This is this has turned into a 15-minute dragon dance. We usually see this around Baron, and neither team's willing to give up that objective, but neither team really has the tools to instantly win. You know, the moment Kevin wants to jump into a team fight, he's going to get rooted by Freddy or knocked away by Tristana. The moment Freddy wants to jump into a team fight, he's going to get kicked away by Cottonex or rooted by Kerp and Jerry. So there's so many tools to deal with the limited initiation from either of these teams. That's why we're having these awkward extended standoffs. Well, Jerry took a lot of damage there. Some good poke from SK, and they feel that may well be enough to go back in. They start the dragon off again. Millennium claps in. There's no movement from the bottom lane at the moment. Kratons continue to farm, and this dragon, I think, is going to be secured this time around. SK will take it. Yeah, very easy. Millennium too slow to react. The day. Oh! Not the fight, though. Kratons on there. Now is he going to get focused on? Can they try and get away from this one? Can he find a move? In? Magnum Photo Bomb catches on towards Connex. He's taken very low, but will survive. Meanwhile, back up you can see Kevin and Kurt moving in. They cannot land any of that crowd control though, and SK safely disengage. Smarter positioning from SK and punishing Millennium for splitting up. Now Millennium, they can make a small turnaround. They've got minions moving up behind them, but Jezus should be in range to get some bouncing bombs down. We'll see how quickly or how long they commit to this tower push. But Millennium, they split up. They were in the middle lane, they were bottom lane, they wanted to farm, and SK rushed Dragon. I mean, it was a timing thing. And SK punished Millennium for being too far away and being too spread out. So when the scrim comes around, he will see Kevin there. No, Trinity Falls still completed. He fancies it, goes in for it. Can he try and draw something from this one? Kerp instead throws out the light binding and the loose singularity and will have to back away. So it's going got the ward. Worth it, I think. <laughs> but the main thing to notice is just how much damage Finskeren's putting down. Whenever you see Alistair, your brain tells you tanky, but he's only got a Phage and a Sheen, so he's nowhere near tanky yet. And I made that mistake as a spectator yesterday, going, oh, Alistair's coming in, this is going to change. Why is he almost dead? Oh, there's no resistances or HP. So you have to remember that Kevin, while he doesn't have his uh, ultimate up and running, he's not going to actually be a very, very big threat. He's got those uh, boots of mobility. And we'll see if he can impact any of those side lanes. So make something things happen. I want to point out here, actually, for Kerr, especially because obviously Lux was a champion. We saw a lot of people running back in season three, and I distinctly remember Froggen talking about it. You know, the usage of the ultimate. His words were exactly, "You need to use that ultimate the moment it's off cooldown, every single time, non-stop, continue using it." Don't save it, which is what Kerp seemingly has been doing. Obviously, we just saw him to use it to wipe that wave out. But you can see, he used it, went back to base, comes back, it's back up. It's such a short cooldown. You have to keep firing it, keep just trying to land those shots. I agree with you, and, and to expand on the point, if he had maybe called to go for the laser for the Dragon Steel. You know, it was, it was pretty just clear Millennium didn't want to go for the engage. Go for the Blind Steel. I mean, these guys have all got that sixth sense and, and game sense, and they knew Dragon was going on. They were making moves towards the pit, but it didn't happen. So we'll see, we'll see how Kerb continues to use it. He's got that second level now of that final spark, so even lower cooldown, higher damage. But Millennium, they've just slowly been ground out of the game once more. Lost a Dragon, lost a Tower, being outfarmed in top, in jungle, in AD carry by a small margin, and it's just... It's just these small wins that is going in SK's favor. One thing I always note with Candy Panda, and I love him for it because he's awesome. He hits the damn tower <laughs> every time. He will walk up, get a couple of shots, and then back off. He is not afraid to put himself out there. Sometimes. I'm so glad you said this. Sometimes it puts him in a sticky situation, but he will always walk up, get a couple of auto attacks, and then back away. It's exactly what God he needs to do. Look at God the damn score. Yeah, Sven so Skirin got a. A lot of punishing damage. The Hex Drinker is now completed alongside that Brutalizer and the Elder Spirit. While this is all happening, of course, the top lane has been a bit of a problem. Kevin up against Freddy again is being forced back, out far, and maybe outplayed. And in, I, I want to reiterate, we talked about Kevin in the pregame. If Kevin is doing well and uh, 
you know, is able to perform in his lane. He's the front line that Millennium needs when they go for all of these engages. It, it, a lot of it rests off Kevin having strong and steady and stable performances. He's lost both of his games on Aatrox. He's behind in his game on, on Alistair. And I think Millennium have either misread Maokai or just Ooh. underestimated him. Ooh, flash used there, Freddy dodging out. Almost caught by the light binding, remember. Later still being held. Candy Panda going aggressive on Kreaton. on the wave comes out from Enrated. Candy Panda in trouble, locked down. Soul Shackles goes off, forces the flash from Enrated. Finally, Millennium get themselves a kill in the bottom lane. Yeah, well played by Kreaton and Jerry. Took a long time for them to really go nice and aggressive. Uh, Trinity Force Cogmore is going to do more damage than an Infinity Edge Tristana. Just the whole kit of Coggins, especially if you just park yourself down and, and load with Living Artillery. So, grabs himself a kill, grabs a tower as well, and that's going to close that gold lead. You can't bark up that tree. Freddy grabs the golem. It's just... Oh, gonna have some fun with it, he? So, <laughs> top lane, Freddy is, is dominating still. Absolutely he dominating has. Kevin. Yeah, I mean, he's, again, fallen behind in CS. Just so, unable to deal with the Maokai. This this game is going to be slightly drawn out if SK are to win it. And the reasoning, they want Freddy to become the unkillable, unchoppable wall tree. And they want Candy Panda to be relevant and have a power spike. I think the way SK played in game one was very telling. They wanted to hit their power spikes. They wanted to hit their itemization levels before they challenged. And then even when they were challenging, it was super risk averse. And it was very much about the safe plays. And it feels like that's what SK are doing again. You go back to all of those Dragon engages. SK danced around Dragon instead of committing. SK danced in and out before stealing it away by having better positioning. Well, Trinity Force is finally being picked up by Kevin. But SK, they are moving into the jungle. Blue buff is a possibility. Of course, Dragon is alive. Oh, Jerry. He's going to walk straight in. He's not going to be able to survive the burst power of Svenska and a Candy Panda combined. That could well be the Dragon for SK. Yep. Going to at least be one of those very powerful CCs that's not available. Teleports both up for the top laners, but no movement from Millennium. They're going to be giving that one up. There's no vision in the pit for Millennium either. SK have got decent wards in the blue buff area. Actually, very good wards in Millennium's blue buff area. We'll see if they can find Curve. The Satchel Charge will slow him down. Double. Yeah, Bug's looking for him. We'll see if the Bug can splat Kurt. Mines are not going to land, but the Bouncing Bomb will. The wave comes through. It's, it's Mega Inferno Bomb lands. The wave lands. In goes Kurt in trouble. And he will go down. Sven Skurin gets on towards him. Leaps on towards Konex. Gets the reset pick used by Konex to force him away. We finally saw that laser coming out. That's the first time in around about five or six minutes since he last went back. He just keeps holding the trigger. Yeah, I think Kurt was actually turning the light on to go to in his death. Simply didn't matter. He got ran he he down. Dead, yeah. Every single member of SK just chased him down. After punishing Millennium for being out of position, they grab a dragon. Oh, Kreaton's been jumped on. He He's caught out. Freddy's going to catch on. Twisted advance. He will go deep, but he can tank out all that damage. Look at that. Candy Panda explosive shot just blows him away. Gets on towards it. Gets the double. On to Jay Ree. Can he get the triple? May well fancy it. Flashes for it. Oh, Dark Binding caught out. Candy Panda run away, man. He will go down. Outplayed by Jay Ree. Yeah, you can't blame him for trying dark binding as he lands now they're gonna oh, go for the cow. kevin he's caught out light binding laser sven scaring just not enough damage coming out of curb right now and sven scaring with the hex drinker just shields it off manages to walk away from that one sk gaming punishing millennium over and over for being out of position and just really poor parthing that's very brave from sven scaring still yet to back away I guess uh, he's far enough ahead. 115 CS to 61 on Cotton X. And just really great combination here from Millennium. Despite the fact that Creatin pulled Freddy under a tower, Freddy took next to no damage. And let's just see how close is that. One more hit. Yeah, one more hit probably would have done it. We've seen the heal from Alistair. But knock up and dark binding, that's going to cost him his life. And you can't blame it for trying. Why not? It would have it would have got another tower if that kill had secured. I think dreams of triple kill, quadra kill, and potential penta kill in the quarterfinals are flashing through Candy Panda's mind. Why not, like you mentioned, go for it there? It seems to be working out well for him now. Well, static shift is completed. You guys at home, while well, that vote is swinging in SK's favor, 57% of you now getting behind them. 
We've seen some big plays throughout this series as well. Millennium, are they going down to a clean sweep? A 3-0, will they be facing Super Hot Crew in that fifth place playoff? Kevin, meanwhile, that ultimate is not being used. He's holding on to it, doesn't have it available yet. Can he get it live? No, and Rated caught out. Laser comes through, but he lives. And still, the power is not there for Millennium as they slowly get beaten out of their own jungle. Somebody on Reddit needs to make the, a punchline to the following opening line. A insect, a tree walk into the top lane and they order Filet Mion Kevin. What's the punchline? Don't know. I don't know. But that was just an easy kill on Kevin. SK are romping across the map. There's nothing Millennium can do. And the moment somebody's alone, SK jump on them and kill them. Every single member of Millennium that's been alone for the last five minutes has died. Yeah, and SK get themselves a blue buff for Jezzas. Oh, wait. No, oh, no. Oh, scumbag Sven. Sven Skurin managed to get, I don't think he planned it. He just kind of hit him. <laughs> the red buff, I think, finished it off. It's big smiles in Jezzas face, at least. Yeah, it's like, He's not well. too frustrated. It's I'm a, sure he'll get his own one soon enough. It's a 6,000. He's got his, already got his own one. It's a 6,000 gold differential. Nevertheless, Sven Skurin catches just about everything thrown his way. Bottom to it now going down. Candy Panda continues to move him with the wave and they're pinging it. SK is going to rotate around here. Jay Reed low on health. The siege continuing and everything for SK is going their way. Look at Freddy waiting off the side. Kraton throwing out those saplings, getting the slows down on Millennium. They could push both towers at once. I think they can. Candy Panda has been left unattested or uncontested for a while. And despite the long range engages, oh, the satchel. I think that made the laser miss. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Kupfer caught. It caught out into Rob. It in laser while it looked like he went off. Didn't quite. Kevin now caught out. Leaps in there. Sven Skirin catches on towards in the Aqua Prison. Enough. And he will get a kill and just leaps on out. There is the inner turret going down. They can keep pushing this one, ladies and gentlemen. There's only three man defense on Jay Reed's got no health. The bouncy pops coming through. Inhibitor turret going down. It's another short game, surely, for SK Game. And as they continue to just charge through Millennium's base, there is nothing Millennium can do. They were relying on their range. They were hoping that the Lux and the Morgana was going to be able to keep SK at arm's length and prevent them getting caught out. It simply isn't the case. That satchel went off just before that channel, that spell animation went down. And I think either cancelled it or made it miss. But regardless, it doesn't change a thing. Even if the damage had applied, Jezus was still next to full health and SK just continued running across it. Fantastic stuff from SK Gaming Millennium. Started so close, started so well. It was a tight dragon fight for a good 15 minutes, but SK Gaming just, once they sniff the lead, they just absolutely make it count, and they are doing wonderful things right now. Millennium, they're going to have to hope for some form of miracle. They're trying to find it well, in catching out Candy Panda in the jungle. He's off the side there as four members on Millennium push through down the bottom lane. Kevin singled out on his own. He's in trouble. He's going to go down. No doubt about that one. Sven Skirin gets the kill on this one. While well, Millennium, what are they doing? They're waiting. They're trying to catch out. It's N-rated. Simply catching on support. You still don't even have the damage to finish him off. Connex comes around. They threw everything at just simply getting a kill on N-rated. Now SK closed the net on towards them. Kraton fought out. He's going to go down. Jay Reed, the next focus. He will go down. It's a simple kill. It's just a kill lane. I don't know what the call to call it. Simply SK just dominating Millennium. I don't even know what they were planning down the bottom there. I agree. And I'm super happy that SK have uh, uh, proven me wrong. I was anticipating them to play safely and, you know, avoid those long-range skill shots. But because SK have been presented these opportunities of Millennium being out of position, they've not hesitated. SK have played aggressively. They've punished Millennium for being out of position. And they've continually just taken objective after objective. They've given up one tower this game. And the wave that Candy pushed a few minutes ago into this bottom inner turret will now be finished off. And it's just all about SK. And you know, I, I recall the conversation I had, I think it was N-rated or Candy Pan, I'm not sure which one it was, just a couple of weeks back, and I said, well, I say, who do you want? Who do you want to face in the quarterfinals? And it's like, Millennium, we know exactly what we're up against. We know what they're going to try and do, and we know how to play against it. And honestly, they've come into this quarterfinals with an absolute perfect strategy and just dominated Millennium, who just have not turned up. Yeah, I completely agree. SK have have responded to Millennium's picks and bans. And it's, it, it is a combination, right? Because I think Millennium may have had their theories, may have had their strategies and their plans coming into this, 
Red side in games three, counter pick mid lane. But I don't think they've done it. You know, I don't think they actually executed the theory well at all. And in all three of the picks and ban phases, you can look at specific champions and go, why did you do that? What was the point of this? What were you hoping would happen? And then when you get in game, they are also just mechanically not delivering to the standard we've come to expect. This is super weak millennium, not the 10 weeks prior. And this is super weak SK. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it, I mean, you can look at every single lane. It's not just any particular lane. Freddy outplayed Kevin every single game. Sven Skeren in the jungle has been brilliant. Gone out once, but he made it count. Quickly got straight back and got some kills. Jezus, yep. honestly, has done a lot better than Kirp in the mid lane. Kirp has been a fairly non-factor in all three of these games. The fact that he's got a Mechie Soul Stealer on looks right now screams desperation. Candy Panda has been magnificent. Simply, he's got, what, 30, uh, 20 plus kills already in the, just these three games. He's absolutely been dominant. And alongside him, N-Rated has been brilliant. Landing waves, landing dark bindings, landing everything that he needs to. Yeah, SK have just completely stepped up the game. And with SK looking like they're going to close this one out 3-0, we very realistically could have a playoff bracket that looks like the spring split. I'll get to that thought in a second as Millennium. They're getting split off, but there's no Sven Scary. Candy Panda's the focus target, but can they get him down? Everything thrown at him. The laser will finish the job. Now, can they make this something? Yes, Freddy's going to get tanked down. He will drop. Mega Inferno Bomb does a lot of damage coming out from Jezus. They may well turn this one around. Everybody is still low. In comes Sven Scary. Finally, he joins the party a little bit late to this one who was not invited, Connex instead comes in. It's a three for zero so far for Millennium. Can they make it count? They're gonna have to push hard down the mid lane. They need to make something special. Oh! Sven Skeren leaps in, gets himself one, gets the reset, jumps out, flashes. He can still keep picking them off. He's gonna kite them around here. Great on those, focused on N-rated, he gets caught out. It was a four for one, but if they're gonna go Baron, that is a big, big risk with Sven Skeren still alive. I feel like even with a massive team fight like that, Millennium were able to punish Sven for being on the top lane of the map. It was a positional error. Kevin is teleported back in. Sven now 1v4. And I don't know if he can steal this. Regardless, this is a tad risky. If Kotnex or Kerb go low, there is reset potential here. Not gonna risk no, it. from SK is close enough. Okay, so Baron is big. The team fight itself was not necessarily the greatest of losses because SK still had a 10,000 gold lead. But getting Baron, having your teammates respawn, and having the buff available for the next fights, that's very important. All credit to Kotnex and Jerry for catching Candy Panda and killing him. Because the moment he was re removed from the fight, it became infinitely easier. Um, Sven and Candy are your consistent damage over time, auto attack spells, and then Jez is hopefully spamming from long range. But obviously there was no Sven in that fight, so Millennium punish, and they win 5v4 convincingly, as well as getting Baron. Now they're back in it, but it is still a very, very, very big hill to climb. And we just saw Kevin and Creaton also taking the top turret down as well. So they've got themselves two turrets. And the Baron, can they do anything else with it? Or was it simply a fight of opportunity with everything working out? Candy Panda was singled out. And once those two carries kind of went down, it was Millennium. That does prove they have a lot of power. Let's keep your eye on that Soul Seed, by the way. I want to see how that one stacks out. How many stops did he end up? Five on it currently, so it's almost making it pay. I think six is the margin when it starts to actually work in your favor. So, not. It's a big risk, and it may well work out for him, but at the moment, SK, they're just going to take the time, you know, sit back. They're against the Baron up team right now, so they it's not on them to do anything. It's down to Millennium to try and make use of this. Yes, it, I agree. And uh, for SK, now they might actually play more passively unless Millennium present uh, solo targets. But for Millennium, with the Baron buff, they've bought themselves time. So the gold lead that SK had accrued will become less significant as the game extends for very obvious reasons. And in order for Millennium to claw this lead back, they want to make use of Baron to either scare SK away and get towers or dragons. Dragon's gonna be up in 30 seconds. Millennium appear to be grouping for probably that very objective, but we'll see if they can make a play on the middle turret first. And the moment Millennium start clawing back that objective gold, now the burst damage from Kerb becomes scary. Now the dark finding from Jay Reed is more threatening as well. But they've got no minions to work with, so can't go for the towel. Well, that's the problem. They're pushing up against the Ziggs. 
He can wave clear, no problem. Candy Panda alongside him on Tristana, explosive shot. That wave will not last. Sven Skeren with, with his Voidmus spikes, you know, uh, Void Missiles rather, got the Black Cleaver, got a Hex Drinker in there. I mean, he's also no, no slouch at clearing minion waves and actually sneaky. That's just going to sneak it. Millennium, I don't even know if they're aware that dragon was up because they made no move towards it and they need to. They need to be making use of Baron. It's a, it's a, a deterrent for combat and they haven't done that. Well, every time they step forward, they get those void spikes in the side, slows them down and they step away. This turret, simple outer turret, they can't get it down. Millennium trying anything, trying to, they're trying to land the picks. You can see the sonic waves are away going in, the dark bindings are going in, the light bindings are going in. They want to manage to land something on Jezus or Candy Panda, but they're playing, so, they're playing defensive. So if Millennium keep it up, they do have minion waves in top and bottom pushing in their favor, but it feels like it's a little too little, a little too late, if, if I can be that harsh, because those minion waves are going to take quite a while before they get to a tower. And the moment Millennium peel away from the mid lane, they've got to deal with a Mega Inferno Bomb for wave clear, so that instantly eliminates one threat and they're not going to make it to the opposite side of the map, to the other minion wave. So it, it just feels a little a little half-hearted. Let's see what Jesus does. There you go. So top wave completely destroyed, but Millennium, they're going to tank this with our minions. Oh, and rated. The laser was finally used from Kerm. Look at it. It's such a short cooldown. Make more use of that spell. They are not throwing it out half as much as I'd like to see. Instead, it's another chunk of wave clear. Jesus is back. And they can't push anything in. Freddy's happy to save his dark bindings. He can tank through that one. Every spell that gets used, he's going to regenerate a little bit more health. And he's going to have the sustain from Inrated to help back him up. Baron buff has worn off, and Millennium didn't even make a dent in the tower. Able to stall. Able to stall. Um, to be fair, they did get a few auto attacks, but no. I mean, they spent two and a half, three minutes literally watching SK wave clear. That is, that is exactly, and then when Z uh, uh, Jezus disappeared, they're like, okay, we'll sneak a few hits. Jezus will let us have these. And then they ran away. Um, it is still a 12, 11,000 gold lead. It is still a matter of Millennium having little tools to contain SK. And still, they made a lot of individual positioning mistakes, which is why Millennium's in this position. Kevin's gone the tanky route, so let's see if he can sustain or keep a, a team fight going long enough for Creatin's Cogmore to be relevant. I don't think he had time to get the Static Shiv, honestly. I don't think he was able to do any of that split pushing that maybe he wanted to do, maybe originally planned to do for, for Saw, maybe. But SK Gaming pushing on through the mid lane. Now it's their turn. They have that gold lead. They're well aware of it. It worked well for them in the past. Now they're I think maybe going to flex some of that muscle and prove why they managed to just charge through that mid lane and expose that inhibitor. Who is how the force now and has respawned. So Millennium are on defensive duties without a tower. Yeah, the, the, the aggressive positioning from SK, knowing that Baron's down, is just such a, such a confident tell that they're going to look to punish. And despite Freddy eating multiple Dark Bindings, no one else from SK has been caught. No one else has been punished. Let's see if, if Candy Panda going aggressive for the inhib can get him caught out, because it is something that does happen from time to time. And there's also the threat of a flash soul shackle engage. The Millennium time is running out. They need to go in now if they want to try and make a fight happen. Well, then here, but I think they're accepting the fate that that will go down. Connex was trying to make a play. It's Svenskoen, he's caught out with the Sonic Wave, and I think he's going to follow that one. And Freddy runs defensive duties while the rest of his team rotates up, and that's going to be an inner turret because Millennium are too slow to react to this one. Candy Panda has a gigantic wave with him. And Millennium are, again, it's too late to this part. Yeah, Millennium too scared to engage the inhibitor, so they don't defend that. Then they're too slow to respond to the top lane minion wave, and SK get uncontested objectives. And it's just very smart play. I mean, uh, I, th I think SK is, is very well deserving of all of the accolades that they have in this series. It was a slow start in game one, and I was nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I was worried about the level from both teams because Millennium was struggling, and SK appeared to be struggling. But they've definitely shaken off the rust in, in games two and three, and come out swinging. Well, Baron now up, SK in position and waiting for someone from Millennium to take a peek. Instead, Jezus is simply putting damage down from the side. Millennium looking to continue pushing. Are they gonna go for the turret first? 
It's something they've been working they for. They can get oh. the away could cause trouble. Freddy popped the ultimate. He wanted to go for that one, but it wasn't quite close enough. That twisted advance, of course, hasn't got the range he once had, which is why he wasn't able to get close. Had flash available if he really wanted to go for it. And this is exactly the same position we saw them in the last time. Millennium came out on top. Oh, Kerb caught out. With a quick heal comes on towards him. Kevin now in trouble. How can he tank through all of the damage at the moment? He's going to come around the side. Great on off the side, untouched so far. Jezus gets in. They're all close, lined up. The laser lands. Candy Panda has the rocket jump out of there. Kevin will finally go down and Rated takes all the damage. It's a one for one trade so far. Both top laners picked off. So it's going looking to try and finish this one. Candy Panda flashes in for against one against two. So it's Garen gets the reset. Candy Panda straight in there, he will, goes in towards Garnet, gets on towards him, he will go for the reset, is it going to be enough, he's just going to voice voice back up the moment, he will finish him off, no, gets away, but the base is exposed and SK can push it. There are super minions pushing up the middle lane, Jez is going to look to interrupt Kerb, if he can kill Kerb, that oh. is their wave clear, now Mega Inferno Bomb is not available, base. look at the base, as long as Jez keeps Kerb away, there's nothing to clear the minions away, it's SK done. have done it. It's over, SK Gaming, they're going to take this one 3-0, there's nothing the Millennium can do and it's a fantastic performance sk will go through and face alliance in the semi-finals of the european regional championships can they make it to world championships they are one step closer and that is a beautiful sight fantastic 3-0 for SK, a dominant, dominant performance here in the quarterfinals. Yeah, Freddy's going to be so happy with that performance. He's he's leafing here today with a massive smile on his face, and he's firmly rooted himself in the top, you know, a, a top team here in Europe. This is this the second split in a row where the same four teams are in the top four. Yep. And well, last time around. History proved the Rocket actually took down Alliance for that third spot. Can SK and Fnatic make it to the finals just like they did in the spring? I don't know. I don't know because game one is still, there's so many questions for me regarding SK in game one. And I'm, I think, I think it was a safe play. I really think they were maybe anxious about the engage and they were worried about Ziggs. But if they, if that is not the answer, it was very slow, and you contrast that to game two and game three. So decisive, so coordinating. Would Alliance make the same positional errors to allow SK to build that lead up? And I don't think they would. And we talked about it yesterday with the Challenger game, the Unicorns of Love versus Ninja and Pajamas. We, you know, we said, is this simply UOL playing so well, or NOP playing so bad? And you've got to ask the same questions today. Have SK been that solid? It looked like they were, but Millennium, they really looked shaky. They did. And I've got one more in me that I'm going to get out of. I think Kevin's going to be in a very bad mood after that game. The Alistair didn't work out, and neither did his Aatrox. Um, it, it's just a tough day at the office for, for Kevin and the rest of the team. For everyone involved in Millennium, yep. honestly. Kevin yep. played outstanding, and maybe the, the pick strategy didn't work. You know, they let that first pick choice go through, and three out of three times, Freddy absolutely pulled out a beast. Maokai twice, and Nidalee in the top, first pick every time. Actually, Morgana was first pick last time in the second game, too. It, it was, and I also think if you step back and look at the three games, two of the games are not necessarily pick comps. Um, maybe, yes, you, you could argue Lux, Morgana, Land Bindings, you can pick them off. But it's not a Millennium-style pick comp. millennium style is a lot more aggressive, in-your-face aggro. Braum, Fizz, you know, Twisted Fate if it was available, those kinds of things to jump in. And Millennia may have been scrimming and practicing other compositions out of fear of being countered by their picks, but I think they may have thought about it, may have gone back to that game three. Instead of running Lux and, and mm. uh, Alistair and uh, uh, Morgana, maybe gone for Aatrox, maybe gone for Fizz, gone for Braum, and, and tried to do something that they won so many games within the regular summer split. And on to SK Gaming, of course. They're going to be facing Alliance now. Lost to them 3-1 overall over the split. Can they turn it around? Can they manage to take down Alliance, who honestly have been a juggernaut this season? Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I think I'm going to use an analogy that we said yesterday. SK have probably got a very similar skill ceiling to Alliance, but they have demonstrated that their skill floor is lower or less consistent. Mm. You know, Alliance have been at a much higher basic level. Even an Alliance average game has not been particularly worrying, where some of SK's games you've looked at and you've gone, Ooh, I'm not really sure what they were thinking or what they were, what they were doing there. So if they can adjust and deliver at a higher level, we're going to have one hell of a series at Gamescom. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic semi-finals, of course. That's coming up next Friday. For now, though, we're going to speak 